Hello, another car boot bargain is this old Sony FM AM multiband receiver. It's got uh, FM AM airband, five lots of short waves, etc. etc. But it's got that typical sound. I don't mean a Dajo in G minor by Albinoni. I mean crackly. Oh, it's awful. So I'm going to take it apart and we'll clean up all the contacts and things, spray it with a bit of lubricant, etc. Have a look in there. Also, this dial here changes the, the bands and it seems to have some form of a, a crease going on in there. It looks like it's a piece of material. So I'll try and straighten that up as well. And uh, we'll have a look in this uh, baby. Oh, it's beautiful music. Anyway, I'm going to have to take this over to the workshop. So, if you bear with me, I'll take it to the workshop. There you go, now we're in the workshop. That's a bit of a sh another piece of aerial hanging out of the back there. So, let's get in this thing. Screwdriver. A lot of people have problems with this dial. It's a kind of a tube. And if you can sort of see from the side, there's a, a little bit of warping going on. And several people have had the same problem with that. But I'll have a look inside and, and see what I can do with that. It's, it's in reasonably good condition. Uh, that says nine band. You probably can't see it on the camera. Uh, squelch, uh, BFO, beat frequency oscillator, RF gain, tone, volume, AFC and this doesn't work too well. This is supposed to be the main tuning and then this is the fine tuning but it seems to just capture the main tuning and turns the whole thing. Uh, anyway we'll have a look at that as well. This is uh, a pull out kind of flip cover that covers it up. That's a solid piece of plastic. I thought at first that would have allowed the sound to come through but I've switched it on and tried it and it muffles the sound. So this is just to protect it. It's a pity really because if that was a bit of speaker grill you could have had it closed up like that. But anyway, let's have a look around this. There's your band selector. Very nice. Lots of bits of metal and chrome. It's quite a nice heavy device. Sony CRF5090. Nine bands radio receiver, VHF air, FM, long wave, medium wave, short wave, one, two, three, four, and five. 13 transistors for reception and seven transistors for auxiliary circuits. Mm, very nice. These are interesting. Pull these little knobs out, or little tabs, and that reveals your space for eight D-cell batteries and uh -huh, I wonder what this piece of wire was. Okay this is for attaching more antennas, more aerials, medium wave, long wave, short wave, FM, that will be connected to the rod antenna on the top there and a couple of earths and this very very strange Sony 3 pin 6 amp socket and a cassette output if you want to record anything. Okay, let's try and get inside it and have a look. This flappy part here that protects the radio comes out by releasing this little pin here. Just capture the little pin, pull it to one side and out it comes. Okay, I've removed five screws in the back and up comes the back ah this is soldered into place there's no plug there i don't think no okay oh nice old school electronics in here mmm smells lovely right next bit now this back panel is in the way because it's got these wires on so 
just to make life easier for me, I'm going to unsolder the battery connections. I'll put that back on later. Here's a little look inside at all those wonderful old electronics from about 1972 or 75. That's about an 8 inch ferrite rod, that one is. There's the strange selector device. Seems to be pushy plastic, like a hollow tube. But what's confusing me is how this is put together. Or rather, how am I going to get into it? There's the fuses, four fuses in there. There's lots of little tuning points. But uh, how do I get this out of its case? I've had to disconnect the rod antenna and there's a screw here. There's one right down there, which is a complete pain to get to. One down there, which is even worse. And then one in that top corner. And I've taken a couple out from the top of the circuit board here. But it seems to at least move. So I'm going to put the camera back on the stand, because I need two hands for this. Let's see if I can get this out now. Come on. Come on, come to daddy. Right, here we go. More bloody cables holding everything together. Right. Why do they use such short wires on everything? <laughs> there must have been a wire shortage when these were designed. This is impossible. I need more hands. At least we can see the pots now. Uh, they seem to be on another piece of metal. So I'm going to unscrew these three screws and try and lift this over because I want to get to the back of these pots to try and spray them. Here's the potentiometers I want to get to to clean. But the wires are so short, I want to get in here and spray inside there but it's a, a bit of a an awkward space to get to but it looks a little bit crusty in here that's actually hard it's not soft I think it's sponge from the back of the speaker and it, it's all sort of gone tough and hard this dial is just a piece of squishy plastic like a, a tube so I don't know if I'm going to be able to get that dent out of there mm. that looks uh, a little bit awkward anyway I've got to get into these maybe I can put the cover on the other side because this is what's stopping me now now where there's a will there's usually a way and now I'm going to be able to get up here and I need to spray just in those gaps there and turn the potentiometers around because that's where the carbon resistance is up in that gap. So I'll put the camera back on the stand and we'll have a little spray around and clean these contacts up. So I've put a piece of paper towel here because I don't want the switch cleaning lubricant to get anywhere else, especially on this dial because it might destroy it. And now if I can wedge this up as far as possible, shove a screwdriver in there, normally does the trick. Right. And then we need to get up into this tiny little gap just in the can. Just give it a little spray and move it around backwards and forwards and that should help move any crud and bits and pieces that's in there. 
There you go, it feels a little bit easier to turn already. I can almost hear it scraping as I turn it around. Uh, do all of them. This one's the volume. This is the one that was making all the noise. Oh, yes. This isn't lubricating it, it's just cleaning. And again, up in these. They're quite tough actually, quite difficult to turn. That one's got a switch on it. I've forgotten what that one is. Let's see if we've got rid of the crackling. That sounds good. No more scratching. This is the fine tune piece on the top and it looks like it's got a little capacitor underneath. I'm getting a bit of black out of it but I'm not sure if that's supposed to be there as a as a bit of lubricant or if it's actually dirt. Whoa! Well, hey. Too much. Let that run down inside the post. See if that makes any difference. Yes, actually it does. So there's the fine tuning dial. And the main tuning turns the string, the cable, to do all the tuning. And the fine tuning goes all the way down and underneath to that little device, whatever that is. Probably a little capacitor of some sort. The wave selector tube is hollow and it's got the little lights inside there, little light bulbs. But it all looks very thin and flimsy. I'm not going to be able to get that crease out of it. So I'm going to leave that. The main problem was I wanted to clean up the sound. I wanted to get rid of the scratchiness of these controllers. Now I've got to put this nightmare back together. Oh, right, okay, let's start. Of course I started putting it back together and it wouldn't slot back in because I forgot to screw down this plate that had the three, well, had the five uh, controllers on it. So you've always got to be careful with that. And also this piece keeps falling off. So the top's got to come down onto this, not this, into that. Or else the pieces fall out and they all end up falling, uh, going around inside this thing. All right, okay. Let's, uh, let's have another go. This is becoming a complete struggle to try and get it back seated to where it belongs. Sometimes I get the odd job of servicing people's guitar amplifiers and they always suffer the problem of scratchy volume controls and you know you say well yeah I'll do it but it'll cost X amount. And you tell them how much and they look at you like you're from another planet and say wow that's expensive for a bit of spray. I don't think they realise all the work of taking something apart to get to the pots, to spray it, to clean things up and then you have to put it all back together again. You can't just wave that somewhere near the volume control and you know fix the problem. There's all this involved as well. Oh well, stop moaning, let's get these in. Now these are not magnetic screws and I've got to go down quite far with one of these screws to get them in the hole. So one trick I have found that I often do is I just use a little piece of blue tack on the end of the screwdriver and stick the screw onto the screwdriver if it's not a magnetic screw. And then that makes it a lot easier to get the screws in. Right, we're almost there. 
just got to put all the bits and pieces back in in the right order. It would have been probably easier to assemble that and then stick the top end out there, but we're here now. Almost there. Now all that remains is solder the battery connectors back on, put the back on, the front on, and then switch on and see if I've destroyed it or if I've repaired it. It's in surprisingly good condition for its age. There's no corrosion on the battery contacts at all. Obviously whoever owned this never used the batteries. Possibly always I had it on mains. There's none of the alkaline leaking, no evidence of it. There should have been two plastic tubes though. And that helps you to put the batteries in. You slide the batteries in the plastic tube and then push the whole tube in. Because if you try and do it otherwise, what happens is you'll get a couple of batteries in and then the middle ones will pop out again and then you lose your temper. But anyway, that's oh, there you go, you see. I've forgotten a screw there. Let me just put that one in. So there you have it. Thank you very much. That was perfect timing. No more scratches. A live more recording pops from me. on there. Uh, everything in working order again. Uh, yeah, it'll last me a few years that radio. I just need to give it a good clean up with some anti static uh, foam cleaner. That's quite good for this black leather look plastic on the top. It's good for cleaning that. But uh, yeah, nice radio, nice bargain. I uh, hope you liked looking into that. Uh, I'll find something else to do soon. Thank you very much for watching.